Hiya. Welcome to Oxfordly walkthrough video. Yeah, welcome. Um, we've had a few comments on some of our other videos and people have asked us in person as well to do a walkthrough of Spudley so that they can see what it's uh, all about and what it's like inside and where we live and how it all works and that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get going. Yeah. Right, so uh, we're currently moored at Braunston in the pound between Lock 1 and Lock 2. And uh, we'll start a bit of a tour. So here we go. So this is Spudley. We bought Spudley September 22 and uh, we had Acorn before that and we bought Acorn in August 21 when we first took early retirement and uh, we loved Acorn but we had the opportunity to upgrade and we found Spudley purely by chance. We weren't actually looking for a boat at the time because we were happy with Acorn on the AB&B website. And at that point, we weren't very far from there. So we went and had a look at it. Really liked it. Went back the following day and spent about three hours on board going through everything and seeing where our stuff would fit, etc, etc. Put an offer in which was accepted um, that was sort of early to mid-August and beginning of September we bought it and uh, moved aboard so for a short period of time we actually owned two boats until we sold uh, Acorn <coughs> um, our survey was done by Elliot Berry and uh, I do plan on doing in the next month or so a video um, about surveys and why you should have one and what of a nightmare we found or what Elliot found on uh, the first boat we had surveyed which was before Acorn uh, which we didn't buy but getting back to Spudley when we bought Spudley it was very much a leisure boat she's 57 foot and we believe it spent most of her time in the marina um, it's 20 15 boat and was bought as a sail away. Uh, the shell is JD Narrowboats of Shardlow and the person who bought her, it's only had one owner before us, had their own um, shop fitting company so it was all fitted out by his own company and a very good job they made of it too which you'll see when we go inside. It's got a uh, cratch cover on there <coughs> And the well deck is down there, as you can see. And there's a, about a 650-ish litre water tank in there. Gas locker in the front, which has got two 13 kilo gas bottles in there. All chained in and tied in properly as they should be for the BSS. When we bought Spudley, as I say, it was been very much a leisure boat and had hardly been used in the seven years that the previous owner had had her in fact it, in the seven years it only had uh, about a thousand hours on the engine might have been slightly less <coughs> and we believe it had sat in the marina for most of the time but because it had been a leisure boat there was no solar there was no stove um, there was no pram hood at the time so we have fitted solar as you can see there there's a top box that's got 275 watt panels on it. There's also another panel there, which is another 175 watts. So we've got 525 watts, which certainly once you get through to April is enough to keep things topped up most of the time or thereabouts. <coughs> and in the, in the winter, regardless of how much solar you've got, it is never enough. That's the uh, chimney stove. And that's the Wi-Fi aerial. As you can see, we've got a Houdini hatch there. And all the ladders and uh, barge poles, boat hooks, etc. And that's the pram hood that we had fitted. We've also had fitted double glazing. We've had that uh, probably a little over a year now. I think that was done around about February-ish 2023. 
So we've got double glazing throughout. We've got eight of these big hopper windows and there's a porthole, I think it's an 18 inch porthole in the bathroom. And as soon as we had the double glazing fitted, man, what a difference. First of all, it makes things a lot quieter uh, when the windows are shut, but also um, so much warmer. Um, absolutely amazing the difference by having the double glazing. It's not cheap, but if you can afford to do it, definitely do it. And as I say, we had the pram hood fitted. The pram hood was done for us by a company called Jectech who you can see there is our little logo. That's been on since November 22, so soon after we got it, because we wanted the pram hood, there was nothing there, it was just a, a semi-trad stern. <clears throat> and it makes such a difference, giving an extra room, and it's great with Nick's when uh, she's wet or dirty, or we've got wet and we can hang coats in there and we can dry her off and all sorts of things like that. She's not looking the best at the minute. It's been a hard winter. It's been very wet. And because of that, I've got some bits of paintwork I need to sort out. And she needs a good wash and a good polish. But the weather has just not been good enough for us to do it as yet. So, that's a quick look at the outside. Let's head in. So as I say, it's a semi-trad. That's the view from the front, looking out the pram hood. Solar goes in through a gland just there. We have got cameras, front, rear, middle of the boat, etc. That's looking out the back. Just step back here. We've got bow thruster, horn, tunnel light switch. And what's hanging on the morse there is Nix's stuff, morse lever there, we've got a locker there, which uh, there's all sorts of bits and bobs in there, mooring stuff and pins and stuff like that. And in this locker, <coughs> you'll have seen on our Lockgate reflex diesel stove, is our day tank for the diesel stove. And just there is the landline and all the gauges for the engine. And below those boards is the engine, which is a Beta 43, and the Ebus backer and the Calorifier, etc, etc. I'm sure you don't need to see an engine. Right, so as we go down, you can see all the uh, dials and gauges and switches there, and all the fuses and for the AC and also the uh, controller for the Ebus backer. And in that cupboard there is just storage and is also the expansion tank for the Ebus backer for the water for the central heating. We've got storage in all these steps. I won't be opening all the cupboards and stuff because you don't need to see what we've got. But... So it's coming down the steps. There are all the steps. In this cupboard we have an all powers 2500 uh, watt um, I suppose they're called solar solar chargers I think these days the long and the short of it is our leisure batteries we've got four 110 hours uh, normal lead acid um, so that gives us a usable sort of 200 220 amp hours this is about another 180 amp hours and it's got all the USB, USB-C, um, 12 volt and uh, 240 volt outputs. So in effect it can actually double our battery bank and it's really useful in that of a, an evening let's say if we've been using a lot of stuff power hungry perhaps been editing on the laptop or something I can turn that on 
and that lead there goes straight and it's into the landline hookup of the boat. So basically by turning that on I can charge the batteries silently, get them back up to float in probably, depending on where they are, anything from sort of 25 minutes to 45 minutes, back up to float and we've got a full power bank as well. It's really useful, we can charge stuff off it, we use it quite a lot and it will also plug straight up to the solar panels on the roof. We have got a solar panels for it as well, as we have for a little jackery that we've got with we run the TV off. But I can actually plug it straight up to the solar panels on the roof and because it will take up to a thousand watts. It's got its own MPPT controller in there. And if you look up there, that's the MPPT controller for the solar panels that are up on the roof. Oh, that's next. We also have a three and a half kilowatt petrol generator. Um, so realistically, we've got plenty of power for all our needs. So we come down, it's a reverse layout on Spudley, and we come straight down into the galley. Nick's his treat drawer there. We've got the um, cooker, which is four hobs, got a separate grill and oven there there's amanda say hello Hi. Again. <laughs> we have got an air fryer which I know, somebody's walking past so nick's having a bark we've got an air fryer which we only use really when we're hooked up to landline or when the generator the petrol generator is running all the cupboards are soft close on the doors as you can see we've got there fridge freezer was just a 12 uh, sorry a 240 fridge when we moved in but we changed it for a 240 fridge freezer not massive but it does what we need it to we've got the stainless steel sink there and as I say there's storage in those steps our um, inverter is actually in there you can perhaps just about see a blue light it's a uh, three kilowatt uh, Victron inverter charger. This is the rest of the kitchen. We've got plenty of storage. There's storage under the sink as well. We've got can cupboards, drawers, as with all the um, kitchen stuff, all the drawers and that are soft clothes. Glass lid for the uh, top of the cooker as well. We have got undergunnel lighting, which you can't really see on this. What I will do is I'll um, do a quick clip later on when it gets dark, but the undergunnel lighting makes things really cozy. So I said I'd show you some uh, pictures with the gunnel lights on. The stove's all lit. It's nice and cozy in here. It's quite chilly out. And this is up into the kitchen. And there's lights in the uh, floor bits just here as well. That's all the way across. They do change colours and you can make them flash and everything, but uh, we tend to just keep it on this. And that's looking back up into the uh, pram hood. You see there, we've got a speaker there. And all the way through the boat, there's two more that you can see there. One in front of you, one by the Houdini hatch. There's also one in the bathroom. So we can have music playing through the boat. We've also got a, a bit of a Bose sound speaker there, which we take outside if we're having a barbecue or something like that. But we've got an amplifier, which we can Bluetooth our phones, the TV. We've got a record player, which is Bluetooth, which is in the bedroom, but we can have it just all, wherever we play music from, we can have it playing through the boat. We'll move on to uh, the saloon and the dinette. Forgot to mention, we do have a washing machine. It's a fully automatic. It's a top loader, which means it takes up a lot less space. And it's low, pen low power as well. Doesn't take much in the way of uh, power to run it, so that's really good. So this is a dinette, uh, we put covers on it uh, in case Nixie manages to come in with muddy feet and that and she keeps her bed just there. It can uh, extend to make a full double bed out here 
there's a, a sliding bit that comes out and it makes up into a full double bed. And according to my sister and brother-in-law, it's very comfortable. Um, you can see there's a bit of a divide between the kitchen and the dinette. There's a window double glazing and curtains, minimalist map. We've got some pictures that were left by the previous owner of the uh, shell being built, which is quite good. And then some pictures that we've put in. And also some pictures of Acorn, our first boat. As I say, there's been a walkthrough of that. I'll put a link in the description and above so you can have a look at that too. We've got a couple of Desmo legs there on the wall and you can see there's a couple of holes in the floor and we can either put in a small table or by Amanda there, a big table. we can put in a, a big table and realistically we can probably at a push get about eight people around there. Six yeah. is comfortable. It's cosy with eight. Yeah, <laughs> but we could realistically get eight people around there. And then just there, we've got the side hatch which Amanda's made just a, a piece of net to go over that, just to stop bugs and that coming in, but we can still get the ventilation. And then we move on to the saloon. When we bought the boat, there was a couple of captain's chairs in here, which to be perfectly honest, had seen better days. Um, we like to sit together and Nick's likes to sit between us as well. So we had a, a sofa made, which has got storage in it. Um, it's, it can go flat, so if you're a child, it would work as a bed, but uh, it's very comfortable. We changed the TV that was in here. It was actually a TV that filled that hole there, that whole big gap. One, it was too big for when you were sitting as close as you are to it. And two, because it was a 2015 TV, it was quite power hungry, so we got a different TV. <coughs> Somebody got it past. <laughs> so we got a different TV which is less power hungry and is slightly smaller there. And that's the amplifier that uh, pipes music through the boat. And that's the Lockgate reflex diesel stove that we had fitted. Just there, I should be able to get a picture from the brochure when we bought the boat there was a, a corny unit that went there so we took that corny unit out tiled it and had the uh, lock gate stove put in which is brilliant and part of the other thing that we did there was a radiator on that wall at the back of the settee but the problem with that is it was a double thickness radiator which meant you couldn't push the sofa very far back so it stuck out quite a lot into where you would walk or put your feet so we removed that radiator, it wasn't needed anymore uh, because we've got the stove and also there's a radiator just there anyway and the other radiators we've got, there's a heated towel rail in the bathroom which we'll go into in a moment and a radiator in the bedroom too. So into the bathroom which is a walkthrough bathroom. It's got a full size quadrant shower there which is good. Well, over there, heated towel rail, that's a nice big porthole window, which again is double glazed. And over here, oh, there's me, hello. I've got a nice basin, mirrors, lights above, etc. Yeah, there's an extractor in here as well, which has got a light in it uh, as well. That's the shower. Not much to see really in the bathroom. Bathroom's a bathroom. And we've got storage under the sink there as well. And so into the bedroom. We'll go up this end first. So we've got a couple of headrests there. And we put these padded bits down the side as well. And then in the winter when the side of the boat does feel a little bit chilly it's uh, stops you feeling that we've got cupboards above the bed and we've put a couple of nets up there i can get that camera 
and what we tend to do is put our phones in there facing down at night we've got usb charger there so we can charge your phones and then in the night if you wake up and you want to see what time it is you just touch the screen on your phone so that's quite good the bed was uh, on three separate boards and it's full of st it's big storage down there uh, which is full and it was an absolute nightmare if you wanted to get to the storage because you had to take the the mattress off the boards off you had to put them down the side here and you couldn't get anywhere so we've put the whole thing on gas struts now so we don't have to take anything off the bed we could just reach under the mattress pull up and the whole thing just angles and we can get in there which is far, far better and there's a radiator that's in the bedroom that is a electric um, radiator I don't think we've ever used it we had it at the house it's a nice one so we've hung it on the wall in the bedroom and if we are either in a marina or if we plug up to the generator uh, we can use that as well as extra heating in the bedroom when we first bought the boat the tv you see where that uh, doggy and hair picture is the tv was hanging on the wall there but there was no sockets anywhere near it to give it power which was totally ridiculous so we moved it over there because there's sockets just under the gunnel just there in the corner and promptly have never used it since <laughs> but uh, it's there should we want it we've got storage here and down here and everything is a corner unit there's a cupboard just there and there's a couple of drawers there we both have cupboards there which we keep our smalls in and we've both got an upper cupboard and also a hanging wardrobe and also there's a place for shoes at the bottom as well so we've both got our own wardrobes which is pretty good and then heading out there there is some storage under that step there uh, and access to the uh, water pump and the water tank and then that brings us back pretty much to where we started albeit inside rather than out into the well deck which is quite a nice place to sit read a book in the summer in mean, the winter too because it uh, can get warm in there but we can roll the sides up and enjoy ourselves out there hi i uh, hope you enjoyed that there's a couple of things that we meant to say where we're actually doing the video and I think the first one was why we actually changed the boat. Yeah, I mean, we loved Acom, we loved the layout and everything and it was so comfortable and very, cozy very as well. airy as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but we did notice after going on a few friends boats that have got the reverse layout and then also seeing our parents getting on and off our boat. Because <laughs> it was a trad, yeah. traditional layout. Yes. And Wayne being six foot four and I'm quite tall as well we thought about if as we get older that might become an issue and make mm. it really uncomfortable for us so that was another reason to sort of why we were sort of we tentatively just looking at boats and like yeah. I say we came across this one totally by accident it was yeah <laughs> the way that it happened it was actually my birthday and uh, it was getting on later in the morning and Amanda says come on what do you want to do do you want to do something for your birthday and I went no I'm okay and I was just looking around boaty websites like rugby boats and ABNB and that sort of thing and I came across that and oh that looks nice doesn't it and she says yes it is it's very nice anyway what do you want to do for your birthday and I said well go and have a look at this boat it's not far and anyway we bought it didn't yeah. we but there is the story <laughs> <laughs> but like Amanda says when we we looked at how our parents were struggling to get on and off the boat we thought hmm we're going to be that age at some point and we're really going to struggle and, and when we looked at the reverse layout on our friends boats mm -hmm. it made the whole thing getting on and off so much easier um, it was straight down there was no ducking or anything like that so that made us think maybe a reverse layout of either a cruiser or a semi-trad might be right for us yeah, didn't it even though we both really love the look of a, a trad from the outside we did <laughs> so i suppose the semi trad is is the happy medium for us yeah. 
And the other thing I forgot to say was the worktops in the kitchen and the bathroom are all Corian, Corian worktops. And the floor all the way through the boat is Condine, which we'd never heard of, had we, until this. But we're told it's very good yeah. um, and we like it we're, anyway. We're pleased with it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very good. So that it, that's it. That ends the walkthrough of Spudley. Um, if you've got any questions, if you think we've missed anything out um, or any comments, please put them down below and we'll answer them, won't we? Yeah. And we like to hear from everybody. Yeah, we do. <laughs> And in the meantime, if you would consider subscribing, that'd be great. And also give us a thumbs up um, because that helps get the video out to more people. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.